Hey, my name is Steve and I am going through the Logic Pro manual so that you don't have to. Today we are diving deep into the tools section of Logic Pro. You think you might know them, but guess again, because there's a few extra tips here, particularly towards the end of the video, that you might be interested in. So stick around and discover just how powerful Logic Pro tools can be. So welcome back to the channel and let's dive straight in. If you spend any time in Logic Pro, you're very familiar with probably the tools that I'm talking about. And that's these tools at the top here. When I click on this first one, this is our left click tool. So essentially, anytime I use the left click on my mouse, one of these tools will be used. The second tool on the side here is the same list of tools. However, it's when I hold down the command key. So if I just look at my workspace down here for a moment and I hold down the command key on my keyboard, there we go, it's changing into the secondary tool. Now you may already know this and you can skip ahead to the sections that interest you, but for anyone that's brand new to this, that makes it quite useful when trying to do things quickly in your workflow because you've got two options on the go that you can quickly switch between with one key. For example, the first one is clicking in certain sections, but then as I hold down the command key, I can highlight larger sections together. I could come down here and highlight just one part of the section, for example, and holding down my option key, drag that section along to another part of the track, for example. So that command key tool makes it very useful. There are a lot of tools in this list and some of them you'll probably be using more regularly than others. For example, I often use the fade tool. When I come down to an audio block, for example, with this tool selected, I can click and drag to make a fade. As long as I start on the outside and drag over, then it will create a fade there. And then with this tool hovering over that fade, I can adjust the curve of that fade or even get rid of it entirely. If you wanna quickly change between these tools though, you've got a keyboard shortcut for that. If you press T on the keyboard for tools, then a whole menu will come up and that makes it very easy to access those tools. So I can quickly switch back to the pointer tool and I can do that by either clicking on this list or clicking one of the associated keys. So the T tool, for example, will get me back to the pointer tool. If I wanna switch quickly back to the fade tool, then I press T for tools, A for the fade tool, and that brings me back to adding on fades. So this becomes very much like a part of muscle memory, part of your workflow. Now this list of tools can be different in different places as well. This list of tools in the workspace is one set of tools, but if I go into the MIDI editing tools for a moment, open up the MIDI window, then when I click on those tool options, there are tools like quantize tool or velocity tool. These are specific to the MIDI environment. When I open up the audio space, for example, again, there are tools in here like vibrato tool, volume tool. Those are specific to this area. So different tools can be found around the system. Here's where things can get a little interesting though. If you want more than just two options at the top here, we can go to our settings in Logic Pro settings general. And if we come across to the editing section, then there's a few options of what we can do with say the right mouse button. If I right click that one, I can set it to an assignable tool. When I do that, a third tool option comes up. It's currently set to the scissors tool, which will be great for this example, which means I can come down here, hover my mouse over a section, right click, and that will cut the track. If I were to set that one to say the join tool, I could come down here, left click and drag to highlight both of them, and then right click, and I've joined them together again. So having that right click set to a tool could again offer a faster workflow, a third option. If you're using tools a lot and switching between them, then a third tool there could be useful. Personally, I don't find using the right click as a tool works well for me. I use a different option. We go back into our settings general again, make sure that we're on the editing tab and then jump to right mouse button and set it to something different. By default, it's on open shortcut menu, but you can make it open the tools menu. That way, when you right click in this area, a tool list comes up. If you're not a fan of keyboard shortcuts, pressing that T all the time, then maybe this is the better option. I personally like the opens tool and shortcut menu option. So then I've got my shortcut menu underneath my tools, but I also have the tools here as well. So that right click button can do a lot more than you probably thought it could to begin with. Now, the final thing here is that a couple of the tools that you would typically use, such as fade and marquee tools, you might not even need the tools to make these actually happen. Happen. Let me show you a couple of things you can turn on and you can have these always ready to go. In this same section, we can jump down to pointer tool in track provides. And in this case, you can go click on the fade tool. Before, when I was fading, I was having to switch to the fade tool by keyboard shortcuts or by mouse and then drag that fade on. However, with this fade tool clicked on, I'm just going to leave it on the pointer tool 
So it's got that one selected. And I am going to just simply drag from the top right corner and it creates a fade for me. The top right corner and indeed the top left corner become fade corners. So we can quickly adjust and create fades all the time. And I really love this, particularly after using applications like Ableton, which allows you to do this automatically and it's on by default. This adds this functionality on as well for you. Now with this top right corner occupied, typically that would have been a loop, but the loop is now moved to the middle. So you can use the top right corner for fades, middle section here for loops, and the bottom is going to be extending or contracting that clip there. Now, the other thing that we can do is at the moment, when I select this clip anywhere on the clip, it selects it and deselects it, of course. But if I wanted to, I could turn on this option here, marquee tool click zones. So if I select that one on, then when I am down here on this track, when if I click somewhere in the top half, it selects the track. But as I move to the bottom half, it switches over to the marquee tool, which now means I can click and drag and select a section. And in fact, I can do that anyway, even on blank spaces or other parts of the project. But whenever I click on the top part, then it's a pointer tool. This is a little bit like Pro Tools, for example, where it has the multi-select tool or the multi-tool option where you've got several tools all in one, depending on where you are on the region. It's quite a useful part of that door that now you can get into Logic Pro as well. So I find having those two set on provides me a lot more flexibility when I'm dealing with the individual clips, particularly the fact that I do fades all the time and highlight sections like silence to get rid of it. It makes having those two tools on really, really useful. So there we go, a deep dive into the assignable tools within Logic Pro. I've taken this straight out of the Logic Pro manual. These are tools that I've actually used quite a bit myself. And if you wanna hear more, then why not follow along? Because I'm gonna do a whole bunch of these videos. So like and subscribe down below and I will catch you in the next one.